think if I were you, Mr. Bentley, I'd lock my door tonight. Mr. Grierson's having a going down party. So I hear. Mr. Grierson hasn't talked about coming down here, has he? Well, sir. Or will you do a few nice pieces that make a lovely bonfire? Or perhaps I'm painting the lily a bit. Still, just to be on the safe side. Thanks for the warning. Mr. Grierson and I have never exactly hit it. I was at school with him. Oh, very nice, I'm sure. I'll bet he ain't altered much. I think Mr. Bentley's locked up for the night, sir. Hospitable bloke, aren't you? Come on down. He says he'll be delighted. Do you mind not bothering me? I'm busy. On the last night before going down, too bad. <laughs> Gentlemen, the occupant of this museum... Boudoir, boy, boudoir. The occupant of this cat house wishes you to take wine with him. There's whiskey on the sideboard. Apparently the only way I can rid myself of your company is to leave you to it. Oh, no, you don't. You're going to sit right there. I say, where can I be sick? Bedroom is over there. Don't stay in the furniture. Not so, old boy, water. Have you got any water or don't you wash? Here's some water. Filthy. Chamber music. Come and join in, Bentley. Ladies halfway. I didn't know you dabbled in chemistry, Bentley. Put that tray down, you fool. There's poison on it. Poison? Stop it, good Charlotte! <laughs> Who's been sitting in my chair? Dusting. Come on, Remember me holding you over a gas bracket with a burner off, so that the flame left past your silly, terrified face? Remember the grave we dug, and the funeral with the white surfaces in the dark? Remember me shoveling earth onto your trembling body, and you shrieking at me not to bury you alive?
Mr. Grierson said he'd be down right away, sir. How is he? <laughs> Death warmed up, sir. Ah, glad you've come. Shouldn't thought you would wanted to have seen me. No, but I do. I suppose you want an apology. Well, I'm sorry. I've got a stinking head and... Any expense you've been put to, naturally, I'll meet. Well, that's decent of you. I don't know why it is people like you get my goat, but there it is. Inferiority complex or something. You've better brains than I have. You talk a different lingo. Oh, I don't know. I'm a pretty good classic, but I don't pass anything. I'm interested in chemistry, but I don't stick at it. Nothing I do seems to lead anywhere. I suppose it's because I don't know the meaning of the word must. That's it. You've too much dough to be disciplined. Even when you first came to Oldbro, you used to make me boil the way you got out of games. You'd say then I was a pretty offensive little brute. Actually, you were, rather. Perhaps a jolt like I had last night was just what I needed then. Well, naturally, I never intended to go as far as I did. As I say, I'm apologizing. Forget it. Decent of you. Oh, my head. Like a tonic. No, I never keep one down. I don't mean the hair of the dog. What then? As I said just now, I'm not very hot at chemistry. But it's pretty useful sometimes. As a matter of fact, after your party last night, I got pretty tight myself. But you can see I've got no hangover. Your eyes are bright enough, certainly. That's the belladonna. You got that too? I've got everything except the Turkish bath. Come on, let me fix you up. I should squat down over there even more. Get out of here. Lucky we left you the bed. Yes. Head back. Reminds me of the morning after birthday's night. Mm. I've got the milky tonic too. How are you, is it? Right down. Don't move for a sec. What are you going to do when you go down? Oh, I don't know. Get a job, I hope. Stock exchange if I can. If you do get your weekends. Got to keep up my riding. Jumping, you know. Not the flat. It's a dangerous game, but my head, it thrills you. It must always be interesting to flirt with death. <laughs> That's good, flirting with death. That's just what it is. Sit still. Just a moment or so longer. You mentioned Oldborough just now. I was pretty unhappy there. Perhaps I was a little cowardly too. But you helped to make me so, you know. What's the point of bringing that up? You enjoyed my misery, didn't you? You reveled in it, just as you reveled in the filthy thing you did last night. What are you getting at? I thought we'd bury the hatchet. So we have. That's all over now. You've had your last rag. You're as good as dead, Grierson. I've poisoned you. What? What have you given me? Allopine and sensorine. The combined action is slow, about three minutes. The allopine works first paralyzing the motory system, and then the sensorine brings oblivion, not death. You'll wish it had. You wouldn't dare. But I have dared. For once in my life, I've really gone through with something. Try to get up. I can't move my legs. That won't be necessary. I've arranged for your transport. You're coming with me to my cottage. There's a picture of it on the wall. The country's intersected with dikes and mud flats. Some of the dikes have pits in them. It's all very uninhabited. At night, it's shrouded in mists. This trunk will slide easily over the wet grass into a pit. Your cemetery. You're mad. Am I? There's no risk. I've got another trunk exactly like this at the cottage. All I have to do is to pack it Transfer the label, and then take it along with me after I've disposed with you. And who'll be the wiser? Stiffening up, eh? Never mind. It'll wear off towards the end. That's the whole idea. See this slit I've whittled away for you? I've given you some air. I also wanted you to feel the muddy water seeping in. I should hate you to miss anything, Grierson.
stop, perhaps you might be wanting a hand to back, sir. I've just finished. I'm only taking one trunk along with me today. I shall be back for the bulk of my things later. Do you mind calling me a taxi while I write out the label? There's a spare one outside, isn't there, sir? Fixed him, sir. Label ready? Tie it on for me, please. Souls? Souls? South Can... Kammer good. In the Tyrol. I'm going abroad. Not going up to your cottage, sir? Unfortunately, it's left. They came in here as well, then. Wanton damage, I call it, sir. Sheer wanton. Are you thinking of taking any action, sir? No, no. Mr. Gresson went away full of apologies. The matter is dropped. Very good of you, sir. In case I don't see you anymore. <laughs> Very good of you indeed, sir. Now give me a hand along with this, will you? Yes, sir. Very heavy. Full of books. Oh. <laughs> Customs and excise. Anything to declare? Don't be an ass, man. I've got a taxi waiting. Any wine, spirits, tobacco, snuff, silk, obscene little literature, or corpses? Oh, come on, boys. Let's open it up. <laughs> All right. I give in. The trunk simply crammed with contraband. But I left the amount of the duty behind in a bottle in my room. Oh, well, that's different. Come on, boys. Yes, yes, I'll, get, I'll get it first. Wonderful high spirits, haven't they, sir? <laughs> yes, haven't they? <laughs> Thanks. Well, we must admit he's taken it rather sporting, eh? Actually, I suppose we should apologise. Good Lord, no, not without Grierson. Well, where is Grierson? Probably on his way. There you are, sir. It'll be all right now. I thought the first news might break. Well, she'll travel right in the guard's way, sir. I've got no bones for you. Well, I don't see the point in going all that way without Grierson. We are in the wrong just as much as he was, and we're going to tell Bentley we're sorry. Yes, but surely a letter would do signed by us all, wouldn't it? Was he put to the vote or was he put to the vote? It was more. It was carried you now. You now. Well, it was carried. Right, we're going to go and apologize. We can be there before dark. He only lives a few miles across country. And he's sure to have a drink in the house. Good idea. No tenants gone from the cottage then, Mr. Bentley? I suppose so. That agreement with me expired a couple of days ago. Oh, uh, well, they ain't used their return arms. I suppose they've gone by car. Aye, that'll be it. Now then, about this trunk. You see, they've all gone to the dart match. There's only me here. Won't it do if I run it down in the morning? I'm afraid not. I'm off to the Tyrol tomorrow. I must unpack some of this stuff tonight. I can't possibly take all this junk. Now, what's all this? Mr. Bentley wants his trunk at the cottage tonight, and there's only me here. Well, there's nothing doing till the 7.20. I'll mind the station for you, if you like. Thanks very much, George. That's well, off you, Pop, then. Thank you. Oh. There you are, sir. Now you're landed. Would you like me to help you with it in? No, thanks. Mind you don't fall into too many dikes on the way back. Thank you, sir. Oh, I shan't. It's a bit thick tonight. I reckon I shall have to follow my nose. I reckon I shall. Oh, no, I shall.
it's you, Mr. Bentley. I... I'm awfully sorry. I'd no idea you were still here. I was under the impression that your tenancy had expired a couple of days ago. If I'd known, I... Mr. Fraser and my niece and I were just this moment going. You mustn't think we've been stealing days here at your expense. You'll find my cheque over there on the desk. We simply had to stay on. It's been glorious here. Let me light a fire for you. I suppose I ought to have wired you, but frankly, I didn't bother. I had an idea you were going abroad. Yes, that's right. I was. I think you'll find everything's aired. I'm afraid your bed's not made. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm not stopping. I'm going away early tomorrow to the continent. You are lucky. What part? Austin, Tyrol. I'll slip up and make your bed. No. It won't take a minute. Oh, you brought your trunk. Our friend Mr. Fraser will give you a hand up with it. No, no, please. Oh, but he's only out in the yard filling the family pantechnicon with his murders. Murders? Books. Sixpennies. You know, the, the corpse on the doormat of it. <sighs> <laughs> the linen cupboard mystery. He reads nothing else. I'll call him. No, no, please. I shall only have to fetch it down myself in the morning. I can unpack all I want down here. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Sir. I must tell you how enormously I love this house. I'm glad. And the whole marsh. It's so, so intriguing. For some. It'd be too far off the beaten track. Not for you, I'm sure. No. There's a lot to be said for it. I want you to understand... I came down here for one or two of my things. A linen suit, for instance. And one or two books of reference. But it's your house. It's we who are trespassing. I hope you enjoy your holiday. You know, you look played out. I've been overworking. Auntie Ursula, what on earth are you dawdling over? My niece. Uh, this is Mr. Bentley, dear. Uh, hello. Can't we do anything for you? We'll help you with your packing. I'll get you a meal. No. Oh, and this is Mr. Fraser. He means well. Huey, you said we should bump into Mr. Bentley. <laughs> I'm usually not far out. I've been wanting to meet you most awfully. Huey was saying from your books, you must be a gloomy old introvert suffering from claustrophobia and the pip. <laughs> but I'm sure you're not. Uh, Huey, light the lamps for Mr. Bentley before we go. No, please don't bother. Oh, but we've learned the knack now. At least I have. <laughs> Idiot. Get off that trunk! I'm terribly sorry. Stupid of me. Oh, that's, that's quite all right. I hope I haven't done any damage. No. No, no, of course not. Come along, children. We must get home before midnight. Well, au revoir, shall we say, Mr. Bentley. Goodbye. 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 made me jump. It were all them lights burning, Governor. Wondered what was up, seeing as that London party's gone off in her car. Thought she might have forgotten and left the place careless-like. But I, I'm glad you're back, Governor. Will you be staying long? Uh, do you want the missus to come and do for you, same like usual? No, thank you, Dan. I'm off again tomorrow. You don't get your money's worth out of this place. You've missed the strawberries. You've missed the best of the peas. Ah, the birds have had them. Them beggarly white throats. Pity you wouldn't let me kill him off. Look here, Dan. I'm terribly busy tonight. Nice of you to have looked in, though. Oh, and there's mullet in the old dike. Good mullet this year. The mud's on the move. Oh? When was that? It started about May. Powerful mortar mud driving all the fish upstream. Mortar worms in that mud. I suppose it's filling up all the pits. Oh, it ain't up to them yet. It'll chock them full one day, though. <laughs> mud's an old leveler. Would you like a nice bit of pork? 
They killed a pig up or down shores yesterday. Only don't you let on. Mrs. is going to make a blood pudding. I should simply have loved it, Dan, if I'd been staying. Good night. Ah, so long as you understand. It's all very fine for the government making you take out a license before you can kill. The butchers don't give the price. Good night, Governor. Good night. And sleep well. Oh, you wouldn't like some fried eels for breakfast, would you? I could put some ley lines out in the sluice tonight. No. Oh, well, maybe some other time. I don't know why we aren't all dead. Have you had an accident or something? That bend by the dike bridge. There ought to be a danger sign. In the mist, we, we, we passed the turn, drove straight on, and took a header in the dike. The radiator's solid in mud. Anyone hurt? Ursula's okay. I got it all. Eve's done something to her ankle, trying to scramble out of the, out of the car. We, we can't tell yet. I'm afraid we're going to be an awful nuisance, Mr. Bentley. Lucky we met your den a few yards down the lane. Is she badly hurt? Oh, I don't think anything's broken. I can see to it. But I'm afraid we should have to take possession of your house tonight. But there's no one here who can... Oh, I've been a nurse. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. Come in here. Sit down. In the chair, remember, Nick. In the chair, then. In the chair, Come along, get mine. Just another two steps. Come along, Nick. Here we are, now. Now, carefully as you go down. See, there. <laughs> this is extremely inconvenient. Accidents are, aren't they? I particularly want to be alone this evening. I have some very urgent work to do. Now, don't be a donkey, Mr. Bentley. He has a girl in pain, can't walk, no car, no comfortable hotel for miles around. Phew. I feel as if I've been not silly. I expect you have, dear. Let's have a look. Uh, should I go for a doctor, Mrs.? Oh, we'll see. Will you wait? Okay. Now, take a stocking down, dear. Now, don't yell. And don't stare, Huey. Light the upstairs lamp and get that box of first aid things that was in my room. I think it's wonderful of you to have so many useful things at hand. Supposing I took you down to the wool pack. They've got rooms there. You see, it's, it's so very awkward. Am I going away tomorrow? Why don't you want us to stay, Mr. Bentley? It's such an extraordinary attitude to adopt between civilized people. I'm sorry to seem inhospitable, but I really must ask you to go. I'm sorry too, but it's quite out of the question. Oh, you are a sight. Go in the kitchen and wash off that stuff. Will you help me up with her presently? Yes, ma'am. Nasty corner, that dyke, Governor. 
I remember once when my uncle that was postman was going his rounds one Christmas Eve. In he went, in the mud, up to his groin. Couldn't free himself no how. Well, come Christmas morning, Parson and his lady found him on their way to church, rooted in the mud. Well, they hauled and hauled on him, and dang me if he didn't come out without his trousers. <laughs> Oh dear, think what might have happened to you? Yeah, what a nice thing for a lady to see on Christmas morning, eh? And before she'd had her breakfast too. And there was his trousers sticking up out of the mud like a couple of bull rushers. <laughs> Very funny, Dan. Mm. Now, will you help me upstairs, Yes. Yeah. You take those, yeah. She'd better have the bigger room next to the slip room, then I can go in and out. I seem to be giving orders in your house, Mr. Bentley. But I insist upon Huey sleeping down here. That'll leave your room. No, no, please, I won't hear of it. But I'm insisting. I'm afraid you can't do that. Come along, dear. It's it. Any minute. I say, Bentley. What is it now? Bentley. Say, I suppose you haven't got a spare pair of pyjamas in your trunk, have you? Mine are parked in the mud. No, I haven't. Well, then I should have to sleep in these trousers. That's if I sleep at all. I should be dreaming of that plunge in the dike all night. You'd better have a nightcap. Come on. Hey, that's a hairy one, isn't it? Don't want it too small, it won't help it to sleep. It's too strong for me. <clears throat> oh, well, can you finish it, Dan? Ah, good stingo. Lee's warm. Uh, Mr. Bentley, Eve's feeling a little faint. Uh, could you spare a thimble full of your whiskey? That's all there is. Well, it's more than enough. Take what you want. Thank you so much. Good night, Dan. Thanks so much for your help. Oh, you're welcome, Mum. Here's your health and a smart recovery to the little lady. Dan, you've drunk my whiskey. Have I, sir? Oh, oh no, I haven't. Uh, I... But I believe I have. <laughs> now, ain't that rich? <laughs> Fool. <laughs> That's what my missus will call me when she hears. Oh, she won't half cackle. <laughs> Stop laughing. <laughs> oh, it was quite an accident, sir. I'm right out now, don't you realize? Well, uh, shall I get you a bottle of old ale from the inn? No, better not. Better not. Oh, well, good night, sir. Good night. <laughs> she won't have cackle. <laughs> good night, A bit edgy, aren't you? Edgy? And I haven't helped either, have I? Ever since I nearly put my foot through that trunk of yours, you've seen... What have I seen? I don't know. Have I done any damage? Have you looked to see? No. I'm sure it's all right. I suppose it's uh, china or glass or something, isn't it? it it's marked fragile. What is? Whatever's inside that trunk. Now, Mr. Bentley, I'm going to make you up a bed. I'm afraid you're a bit big for the couch. I'll make you comfy on the floor. Huey, you'll catch your death. I noticed some old coats of yours upstairs. I'm sure you wouldn't mind if Huey borrowed one. Eh? Oh, no. Help yourself. Get to bed. No, not there. Over here. Oh, what's this? What? Broken glass. 
Oh, glass. I thought it might have... What? I broke a tumbler. I thought you might have knelt in it. You know, I think there's a lot of nonsense talked about spirits. Yes, I wish we had some left now. I think it's a great help sometimes. I've been a nurse, you know. Why don't you run down to the inn and get yourself some? I can't. I can't leave you. You... Oh, don't worry about us. Huey will have gone to bed, and I'm just going. You are? You're upset. A drink will do you good. Take your bicycle. Yes. All right. Perhaps... Good. And hurry back. Have you got your keys? Yes. I've got them all. You found it all pumped up. Huey was using it only this morning. Frightful cheek, I know. I'll forgive him. Get to bed. I'll let myself in. Has he gone? Yes, thank goodness. I certainly didn't want to be left alone with him. See, I don't blame you. He, he gives me the creeps. What is he, a dipsomaniac or something? No. No, it's something else. He's, he's almost shell-shocked. A tragic young man. Of course, we have descended on him. But didn't you notice his eyes? Well, after all, it's no business of ours. We can't live other people's lives. But didn't you notice he's taking the label off his trunk? Well, why shouldn't he? He's probably going to relabel it for Austria. But it was labelled for Austria. And... Come and have a look. See? The same. Almost in every detail. I've checked up on it. Well, we probably bought two at the same time. Yes, but in the one downstairs is a there's a queer kind of a slit. They couldn't have worn like it. You've been reading too many detective stories. Yes, but so do lots of intelligent people. Now look here, why not let's open that trunk and set our minds at rest? Huey, you really are. We can't interfere with other people's property like that. Besides, we're not magicians. We don't need to be. I bet it fits. Come on, let's. Oh, Huey, it's dishonest. And he'll be back in a few minutes. Then let's be quick. Oh, Huey, come back! Once and for all, I forbid you. All right, but please just let me see if it fits. Well, you're not to open it. All right. Yes. It does fit. Well, now I hope you're satisfied. <gasps> what is it, Huey? What is it? <laughs> I hear the mud's on the move. How far's it got? Oh, not more than 200 yards, the other side of the bridge. Good. Do you know where they bite best? By your own mooring post, bang outside your cottage. Why, it must be 20 feet deep there, and they suck in round the wood. As much as 20 feet? Have you ever seen the villagers fishing round there at night? Me? Oh, I'm too fond of my bed. But my girl might have, though, when she's been out with her boy. Annie, mm -hmm. have you ever seen any poachers round Mr. Bentley's place when he'd been out with Jim? No. No, it's ever so nice and quiet. Going that way tonight, Annie? No. I'm washing the air. <laughs> Pity I'd have looked out for you. Oh, now you put the bar up for him every night, Mr. Bentley. <laughs> if we'd known about your rotten service, we'd not have come, see? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I don't make the trains. Now, can you direct us to Mr. Bentley's cottage? Yes, sir, I can. You go down the road and pass the wool pack in. We what? And pass the wool pack in. And we we don't. don't. Pass the farm. And... What are we to do? What are we to do? What can we do? You locked it. Yes, but first of all, we mustn't touch anything. The police always say that. We must leave everything, yes. I bet anything I know what his scheme was. He was going to sink that trunk outside where it gets deep so suddenly. That's why he didn't want me to sleep downstairs. That's why he wanted to get rid of us. But he's not a common criminal. There's something deeper behind this, I'm sure. Oh, if we could only get away from here before he comes back. Out of the house, anywhere. But Eve and... Oh, of course, I forgot them. I'm at my wit's end. Is Eve asleep? Yeah. I know. You go out and look for help and I'll stay and look oh, after things. But you wouldn't fool him for a moment. But he needn't see me. I can pretend to be asleep. No, no, I couldn't leave Eve upstairs. No, 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 you're the one to go. What about Dan? Useless. He'd never take it in. And the police are miles away. No, no. Hide here till he comes back. And then slip out and run. Run! I'll wait in the hall. As if nothing had happened. Oh, just a sec. Just in case. 
Hang on to this. Keep it handy. <laughs> Steady, Ursula. You've been marvellous up to now. All right. All right. Put out the lamp. Okay. What did you do with the key of the trunk? I don't know. Gosh, I don't know. So you've come back. I thought you'd gone to bed. I forgot your pillow till I heard you come in. Oh. How's the invalid? Oh, much better, thank you. Do you mind if I have a drop of your whiskey? I think I'm beginning to feel the reaction from that spill now. No, of course not. As much as you like. I'll go in the kitchen and get the corkscrew. Uh, silly. It's got a screw top. Oh, so it has. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, before I went out, I have strangled you. With one exception, I don't think I've ever hated anybody so much. <laughs> it's different now. I feel as if I, as if I'd like to talk to you. I've never had any sort of friendship. Even as a child, I had to turn inwards. And that, I suppose, was bad for me. I only had my own dark thoughts submerging me, mastering me. But when that happens, the body degenerates and the spirit coarsens. And what do you think starts it all? Cruelty. Cruelty? Nowadays, to children. I tell you, there are hells today as much as ever there were. And in the most unexpected places. When I was a boy, I was once buried alive. It's true. Something within me died. Death was no longer a stranger. It's always hanging over me. With me. In me. Do you understand? Can you feel its presence here? I'm in a world now where the old conditions don't apply. Where I must make my own standards. Fit my own needs. It's a good thing you're not lacking in courage. What made you say that? I'm afraid you're not going to find life very easy. You said that very oddly. Oh, no. Where's Fraser? You? Oh, gone to bed. Probably asleep by now. I must go to his room. Oh, please don't disturb him. There's something up there I must have tonight. Well, can I get it? No. I'm afraid you'll find his door locked. Why? I told you to. Against me? Well, you can hardly wonder, can you? We didn't quite know what you'd be like, armed with a bottle of whiskey. Well, Fraser will have to unlock his doors. That's all there is to it. I'll open it. No. Who is it? Only me, Governor. I, I'm glad I found you up. What do you want? Oh, Mrs. Fair gave me the rough edge of her tongue. Drinking the Governor's whiskey, she says you rough old toad, you man make that good. So I brought you a nice air. He be paunched and hung four days. Ought to be getting nice and ripe now. Don't do to eat a hair till the flesh begins to work off the bones. So chop off his head and fry it with a nice bit of bacon for breakfast. I'll put one in the kitchen. Thank you, Dan. That's very kind of you. 
Now, I want to talk to you about getting the car out of the dike tomorrow. Make half for you to be out, Dan. I'll arrange about the car myself tomorrow. Oh, Dan, if I wanted you during the night, Mr. Fraser could come and knock you up, I suppose. Oh, sure, eh? I, I see him just now round by the Baptist chapel, running like blazes. Oh, but he's in bed and asleep. No, not he. <laughs> no, he's out on some caper. You know what these quiet-looking young fellas are. <laughs> Don't let him know that I told you. Good night, all. Good night, night. Dan. Hey, landlord, I say. Just a minute, sir. I'll see you all in good time. But I don't want to drink. Oh, man doesn't want to drink. I say, I, I... Now, sir, what can I do for you? I say, I, 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 I've come from Mr. Bentley's cottage. You've come from Mr. Bentley's cottage? Yes, I, 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 I say I've no come more. Mr. Tell us he's come. Good old right. Bentley. Old Bentley sent him. <laughs> landlord, fix him up a drink. But we'll I don't never let you go, boy. I don't know we're back. But I, I, don't, I don't want to drink. Well? We thought you were mad. I sent Huey out deliberately. I sent him out to get a car, to take us all away. You were to find you had the house to yourself. That's what you wanted when you came, wasn't it? Yes, it was what I wanted. You do understand, don't you? You might have come back in such a terrible state. You might have... What's this key doing down here? It's the key from the trunk in Fraser's room. I suppose he brought it down. While he was running past the Baptist chapel, I suppose. Might open both locks, mightn't it? Well, you should know. I do now. I think it's the only mistake I've made. Have you ever heard of the murder of elimination? Do you remember the case of Tropman, Jean Baptiste Tropman? He killed the father of a family, and then, to avert discovery, he was compelled to kill them one by one, the whole bunch of them. To avert discovery. You've put me in that position. All right. I did open the trunk, but it was I, not Huey. He knows nothing about it. You see, I had to keep it to myself. I, I couldn't tell him. Why? I thought it'd be safer for you. For me? I don't believe in interfering with other people's actions or their lives. I believe things even themselves out, that we're better without laws and moralities. I don't know what made you do what you did, but I don't care. I only want to get away. I, I don't belong. You do. You're in it. Deep in it. I can get out. I want to get away. To get Eve away. I shan't talk. Tomorrow you, you can do exactly as you plan to do. Only let us get away. I've sensed all along there was something dreadfully wrong here. I've so tremendously wanted to help you. Oh, that's true, really. I understand you. I like you. Do you mind if I keep your weapon rather more in view? What are you going to do? I promise I'll hold my tongue. Aren't you reckoning without your conscience? It seems nothing to you now that you're in danger, does it? But I've got to reckon with it growing, haven't I? There's only one way out. I've got to enlarge my original plan. <laughs> Stop! It's got to be one of us, hasn't it? The man wasn't dead. We got him out of the trunk. He's upstairs. Go and see for yourself. Liar! I'm telling you the truth. Can't you believe me? You see, I, I had to lie all the time until... Oh, it's the truth. Believe me, believe me. Liar! Liar! I, I had to play for time. I sent Huey out to get help for your own sake. For our sakes, you might have killed us all. You must believe me now. The man wasn't dead. He was cold and numb, but he's alive, alive. I know he's dead. I thought it better for you to drown your books. <gasps> Grayson! Grayson! He's alive! I haven't done it! I never wanted him to die! I've been mad! Mad! Don't let them in! 
Don't! Don't let them take me away! What are we to do? What are we to do? <laughs> It's Chris. Oh, we wonder what happened to you. Did you come by car? Why you look as? What's the matter? Well, we came to apologise. You don't have to. I've already apologised for you. to be all right. 